Adventures. Okay, Omega Motorsport puts on an event called the No Fly Zone. And last month, we were allowed to come and cover it a little bit in a media capacity. And it was just amazing. Absolutely. And the, because they allowed us media credentials, we were allowed to go where the normal spectator wasn't, of course. And let me start this video by saying there is no feeling in the world like standing, what, 10, 15 feet from the track at the finish line when a Lamborghini's doing 190, 200 miles per hour, just <laughs> flying by, you feel the wind, you feel the rumble of that 12-cylinder engine. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, and that even, I mean, realistically, that 10 feet was our choice. We could have been inches away if yeah. we really wanted to. We didn't want to push our luck, but... Yeah, but yeah, it was, it was pretty fantastic. I mean, just, uh, so basically it was at the airport in Gila Bend, Arizona, a mm -hmm. uh, half-mile-long track, and it was just all out, see how fast you could go in a half mile and then get stopped. Time didn't matter, you could rolling start, you could wait until halfway down the track to floor it. All that mattered was your top speed yep. at the double finish line. And although you're technically just racing the clock, it was side-by-side -side racing too, so it was almost always two cars going down at once. Or a car and a motorcycle, or two motorcycles. Right. And, uh, Watching the footage from other no-fly zones, it's, I mean, this was pretty much all, you know, top-end race cars, not a whole lot of run what you brung stuff, but um, I've seen, like, other videos from when they were in the Midwest and California, there's, like, pickup trucks and SUVs and everything racing, so it's it's legit if you want to show up and pay the, pay the entry fee to race, which is, at this one, was 200 bucks, um, you could as many times as you could get up there and make a pass you were allowed to against whatever was available at the time so it was pretty awesome yeah we didn't see <clears throat> too many like ford flexes or anything no but there was quite a few camaros and corvettes that probably were barely overstock like yeah. maybe better intake gain and air filter etc cetera, etc cetera. but they were they're high-end cars they're they're fast cars but for the most right. part there was a couple of them that were i'm yep. sure just above stock. Mustanger too that was yeah. pretty close to stock. Um, there was also a well over a thousand horsepower Mustang yeah. that was pretty intense to watch. Um, but there was, I mean, some of the top end cars, like there was that one, uh, uh, what was it, that um, Mercedes, I can't remember what the name, the top end Mercedes that was just purchased, it still had the dealer stickers and yeah. windows. Uh, the two-door coupe, I, I can't remember what I model remember it is now off the top of my head, but it was, I mean, it literally was days old, had the had the dealer stickers still in the passenger <laughs> side window, um, which uh, you might see footage of it, but if not, we'll post pictures of it for sure, but it was pretty crazy. Um, and I mean, literally the slow cars there were, you know, like 150-ish. Right. Right? There was just nothing there that wasn't impressive. I mean, it's, the slow cars there were faster than most people have ever gone. It was really funny, though, because you get in your head, fast car, loud car. And, you know, we, we heard our fair share of loud cars, you know, right. screaming down, the bikes just burrowing into your ears. And then you'd have two high-end, or a high-end Mercedes and a high-end Cadillac right. going against each other, and you just, yeah. as, as you just hear the wind, and it's just yeah. a weird sensation compared to the... The muscle cars and the exotics. Yeah, there was like what, like a couple of uh, like Audis, Infinities, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff that would just, you know, it would sound like they were on the interstate going 70 miles an hour. It was just no big deal. But then you look at the clock and they're going by at like a buck 60. And it's pretty crazy. But I, I still think, <clears throat> I mean, the, the super exotics have like an insane rumble. I mean, listening to the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis, which there was a couple of Lamborghinis and what, at least one Ferrari, yeah. right? Um that was impressive to hear those engines rumble and the, the, the just so unique noise, but I still think there was that one uh, Cadillac there that was ridiculous power. And, I mean, it just flat out sounded like a race car. I think that was my favorite car of the day. One of, I mean, I, I'm definitely a huge CTS fan, and they were there in droves. I think they were probably at least close to, I mean, maybe Charger Challengers were kind of, up there too but I think the most of one type of car was probably the CTS at least pretty close and 
I think the Corvettes and Camaros were very represented too. But yeah, it might have just been so many of those two <clears throat> that it was kind of a little misleading. There was a lot of Corvettes, that's for sure. Um, not as many Camaros. There was actually more Corvettes than Camaros yeah. there, which is kind of surprising because you'd sure think there would be a lot more Camaros on the road than Corvettes. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe people are just scared they won't go fast enough. My favorite car was, I believe it was an Audi with a you know body kit and everything and it was white with a I want to call it a urban camouflage painted like a battleship oh, yeah. yeah it had like gray and silver and like flat black patches yeah. on it and stuff it just looked really really sharp that was my favorite car to watch go down the track it painted like minecraft kind of yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was really cool and that was one of the ones too that was was quite a lot legal. quieter than it should have been too I mean it just seems like it should be going you know blowing your eardrums out but it was just yeah you'd expect the fart can or something <laughs> on it, but yeah. yeah it was very impressive yeah my favorite um just because i've never seen one in person well either one of them the ferrari and or a lamborghini like I've, it was just seeing them come out of the trailer you you just get a little like oh my gosh <laughs> there's one in person i'm looking at one in person it's an iconic car i've seen one of the old Countach's rolled through right. village back in high school, and maybe one or two in my rounds in Scottsdale, and like one or two in Vegas maybe, but you just don't see them that often, and I, just, I got giddy as hell when they opened up that trailer, and I was like, we Lambo, <laughs> you know? It's just, yeah. Let's stop and watch it and roll out. <laughs> even though I know that watching um, like Roadkill and right. all those other shows that if you're not a Lambo guy, don't try to be a Lambo guy. They're, they're just <laughs> yeah. not that much better than anything else. And in a lot of people's opinions, you can get faster, you can get more comfortable, you can get better options than Definitely anything more else. But still, it's just the iconic Lambo. Right. And just the, I mean, the the thinking of the price tag it took to get it there is impressive too. But Plus, I think just about anybody I know, guy anyway, had some Lamborghini picture hanging up on his wall right, when he was absolutely. a kid. And then, uh, plus, I, I've had the uh, the ability, I guess you'd say, to be around. I mean, I've been around to a lot of car shows and car museums and Hollywood, and I've, I've been around a lot of Lamborghinis and Ferraris, most of them stationary, some of them driving through town. Never <laughs> stood two foot away from one going 200 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was crazy. insane. Like, um... It kind of felt like wrong. Like you're standing so close to the track and you're just like, something horrible is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, You've watched yeah. too many videos. <laughs> Absolutely. Or Final Destination movies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of my favorite experiences, though, twice, actually, and it was all in the parking lot. First, we parked <laughs> next to this row of, uh, assumedly, um, souped-up Mustangs. Right. At least I mean, externally. Yeah, externally yeah. anyway. They, they look like they put some money into these cars. Right. To park them in the parking lot yeah. at a race yeah. that they could run them in. And we then, have a picture of that on our Instagram, yeah. so check it out. And then later on, uh, Danny and I split from Helen, and we're walking past the front gate, and we see two more Lambos pull in. We're like, nice. And they were a little bit older. They were um, before the Glotto and... Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what that body style, what that generation was. Or, I don't either, but, but older-ish. Older-ish. It looked like the new age Countach, kind of. Mm -hmm. But two of them pull in together, gaudy metallic yeah. wraps, one purple, one green. And Super. The, the semi-chameleon feel to them when they move, it would change colors a little bit. Like, <clears throat> like these guys... We're proud of their cars, right. and they cruised through the parking lot and then left. The 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 best part of that view for me though was um, it was they came later in the day, so it was full, so it was dirt parking only. So you were watching these gazillion dollar cars follow each other through the parking lot, and they're having to like uh, like make it across the little ravines in the parking lot. And the dirt I think they had I think they had spotters, yeah. so they get the right approach angles and stuff. Yeah. There's a little body English in there. Yeah, that was pretty great. I could, I could just I could feel the anger building inside the people driving these cars, having to come across these dirt parking lots. It was pretty fantastic. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. It uh, one of the things that I really realized there is I definitely 
want us to have better equipment. Yeah. Because it was fun, but I think we could have definitely, you know, like, now we do, thankfully, got us a nice DSLR camera. Um, hopefully a drone is in the near future. I mean, I just, I think that uh, as we progress, we're definitely going to be able to get better footage and stuff like right. that, but... With I think of the said, footage that we did get, we did get some really awesome pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for what we have, I think I think we have um, we got some really amazing pictures, some really amazing video. Uh, it'll all be posted up. Uh, some of it'll be over us talking right as we speak right now. Yeah. Um, but man, the cars! It was just I didn't think, especially as far away as it was, that there'd be the quantity of cars right. that there was. Yeah. And there was just absolutely not one single car there that I didn't want to see go down that track. There was nothing boring, per se. I mean, everything there I was excited about, and it was to the point where even the, um, I mean, even some of the racers were getting squeezed into the dirt and stuff because there was just so little room and everybody, I mean, there was a couple of big race teams there, there was a bunch of motorcycles there, um, the, the Hellcats were well represented too, there was a bunch of Hellcats there, I mean, it was just a little bit of everything, I mean, it was pretty fantastic. Yeah, and it's pretty cool seeing, you know, cars and motorcycles racing each other and, um, you know, seeing a Lamborghini race a motorcycle or just the different kind of cars racing each other only because they are, what, different classes, right. horsepower range and all, and all that. So it Definitely would have been different brackets and stuff. If right. It, wasn't. It, was, it was just really awesome. And I don't want to sound like a Lamborghini fanboy because I'm really not. <laughs> But, I'll be the fangirl. But one more story. Um, it was kind of funny because, you know, it's an airport. It's not a racetrack. So we saw a truck pull up with the trailer. He drops it. And we're like, yes, one of the Lambos. That's awesome. Let's watch it unload. And they promptly start taking measurements and close it back up, move the truck up a couple feet, drop the tailgate again, <laughs> measurements. Yeah. It took probably a half hour of getting dirt to pavement ratio to where their trailer would drop to where they could get the Lamborghini out without yep. destroying it. Without dragging its ass, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah and um, just uh, the fact that it was, this was an active working runway. I mean, it was just closed down for this race, but uh, how the staff had it set up was pretty awesome too, I think. Like, I mean... Obviously, they weren't tearing up the runway, so they had a spot before you turn onto the runway to do the burnouts and warm up mm -hmm. your tires and that stuff, if you so chose to do so. Um, nice long runoff at the end of it. Um, what looked to be a pretty sophisticated uh, speed counter mm -hmm. down at the end by the, by the finish line. I, I, I think it was pretty well set up, especially since it's all portable and temporary. I mean, it's a one-day event. They showed up that morning, get it set up, tear it down at the end of the day, and go on to the next one. So, And then, you know... This was on a Saturday. On Sunday, their airplanes land in there again. So I think that's it's pretty impressive. I mean, the staff pulls off something pretty great there, and especially for, I mean, it's only two hundred bucks to take your Lamborghini out and go as fast as you want, as fast as you can, for almost as many times as you could you could Squeeze do it. In. I mean, because you just it's it's not a, a pecking order. You get in line and wait your turn. And I mean, when the people in front of you are going 200 miles an hour. It doesn't take that long to get mm -hmm. through the circle. So, I mean, some of those cars we were seeing go, you know, every 10 minutes or so probably, 10, maybe 15 at the max, probably yeah. closer to 10. And they, it was a pretty well-oiled machine. I mean, yeah. let me start this by saying safety is very, very stressed. It's, it's a right. very safe, um, the very rules, very making sure that drivers and the fans leave with no injuries and everybody has fun. But they go, and as they hit their brakes on the end, they start to make their turn, the next set are gone. Right. It, was, it was like almost constant racing. Yeah. But we had, we we're down at the end of the track, and we saw a car kind of smoke up a little bit. And we're like, ooh, I wonder what happened there. And they immediately shut everything down, and the owner ran out, and he was testing the ground and stuff and yeah they called it for about 20 minutes so they could lay down the kitty litter and um, make sure that, that it was 100% safe for the next driver and that was really cool yeah it was it was definitely a well-oiled machine that's for sure I mean it well it seemed to be from outward appearances anyway I mean 
Uh, I didn't see any unhappy faces. And yeah. Except for the guy that took his Corvette off into the dirt. He yeah. probably wasn't too happy. Yeah. yeah, we unfortunately missed it, but we got to see the aftermath. There was uh, a Corvette that had a little oops, ended up a little bit in the desert and busted some plastic. Probably survived the race again. But, yeah, I'm sure. Um, but that we saw, at least, that was the only mishap of the yeah. day, other than a few couple cars that... Get almost a little squirrely, yeah. but... It was controllable. Probably some people had to buy some engines after the day was over, mm-hmm. but it didn't really slow down the, the spectator mm-hmm. side of it any. But, yeah, it was it was pretty fantastic. I mean, um, as you watch, you guys will be popping up some of the videos and pictures we took here, so I uh, definitely hope you enjoy it. But let me stress um, something that was stressed to us when we were first getting to know what to expect when we go. <clears throat> it's not exactly a spectator sport. Right. It's, it's fun. We encourage you to go check it out and watch because it's really, really cool. But don't expect Firebird. There's not big bleachers. It's kind of you just set up your pop-up in a little canvas chair and sit back and watch the cars run or whatever. It's, it's, it's a lot more relaxed than a normal race that you'd go to, even like a dirt track race. Right. It's, it's just <clears throat> a lot more chill. You just come to watch these guys with way too much money play with their toys. <laughs> Yeah, and then the the cool thing is is it's they're already coming back to Arizona in March. Um, I don't remember the exact date, but check out Omega Motorsport. We'll throw the link on the YouTube video. Um, it's gonna. I mean, there it's Gila Bend. I mean, from Phoenix, you're talking maybe an hour away at most, give or take the same hour or half from Tucson. If you got um, if you got a car. I would definitely suggest going down there because it's not like anything else you have the opportunity to do, at least locally to us here in Arizona. And legally. Yeah, and legally, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, all in all, it was just really, really good time, and we hope to be able to do it again. Absolutely. Cool. Anything you want to add? Nope. All right, guys, check out the video pictures that will be going over on our YouTube here, and uh, definitely check them out go give their instagram a like give their facebook a like and keep your eye out because they're probably coming somewhere close to you too and it's uh, definitely a good time thanks for watching <laughs>